So welcome to our lesson today and we are going to look at uh, typhoid fever. So when it comes to uh, typhoid fever, we can define typhoid fever as now this is an acute or subacute disease. So we can define, you can basically define typhoid fever as this is an acute or subacute disease caused by Salmonella typhi. And this condition is characterized by uh, diarrhea, uh, body malaise, raised body temperature, which is uh, fever. So when it comes to uh, typhoid fever, this basically is caused, uh, we are saying this is an acute or subacute disease, meaning when an individual has uh, typhoid fever, they are going to experience uh, symptoms in an acute manner and they are going to be severe symptoms such that the condition the patient looks worse and apart from that we are saying this condition is caused by salmonella typhi so we have mentioned the cause uh, of uh, of typhoid fever then apart from that this condition is basically characterized by uh, we have mentioned body malaise so the patient may experience generalized body weakness meaning the patient may feel weak than normal because the red blood cells there will be increased breakdown of the red blood cells due to invasion of the the salmonella typhi in the blood system apart from that we have said diarrhea so typhoid fever is going to irritate the the the, the intestines causing uh, which may irritate the gi resulting in two either um, uh, diarrhea or even vomiting then uh, apart from that there will be fever D this is because of uh, the presence of the salmonella typhi in the blood and it is going to result in to increase the temperature so that's basically how you can uh, define some uh, typhoid fever when it comes to the mode of transmission uh, basically the mode of transmission for salmonella uh, for, the, for the salmonella typhi is uh, through uh, fecal or fecal root. So you might uh, find to say you are using water which is contaminated with the uh, typhoid fever, then you ingest that water which is contaminated, then you might uh, uh, ingest the salmonella typhi. Apart from that is through foods eh, or contaminated foods. It could be vegetables which are being watered using uh, human excreta or maybe foods which have been washed using uh, water which was contaminated and you ingest that uh, food. Uh, and also the, the salmonella typhi can be excreted through urine. So it means if, if this individual uh, passes urine and uh, this urine comes into contact with maybe the water that you are drinking or any food substance, you might end up ingesting the salmonella typhi. So you find to say, uh, you ingest a lot of um, you might you may be at risk uh, of uh, suffering from salmonella or from typhoid fever by ingesting maybe vegetables or raw foods uh, including uh, fruits these are common things that uses water uh, for them to grow apart from that you may directly ingest it through drinking contaminated water and this water has to be to come into contact or the foods have to come into contact with the fecal matter of which some gardeners they use fecal matter for for fertilizer meaning that's how it can be transmitted to the foods and other things okay okay we can now move on to the pathophysiology so when it comes to the pathophysiology so when it comes to the pathophysiology this is going to occur uh, due to oral fecal root ingestion so when you ingest something through the mouth uh, the bacteria is going to go into the bowels so the bacteria will go into the bowels then it will multiply from there to increase in number so the, the salmonella type will go into the bowels uh, attached to the walls of the bowels which is the last the large intestines and then multiply from there after multiplication which is the small intestine rather after multiplication it will then penetrate through the walls of the intestines and spread to the rest of the body 
for further maturation. So the, you find that the salmonella type will now migrate to organs such as the lymph nodes, the spleen, the gall bladder, and also some remain in the intestinal wall. So this is where this is some of the compartments where the salmonella typhi multiplies best. At that point, this patient would have even started experiencing uh, fever, symptoms such as fever and body malaise because it would have spread to the rest of the body. So you find to say uh, in the first few weeks, so furthermore in the first few weeks, the, the, the two of the infected person are infectious and the person may become a carrier for life. So after being infected with salmonella typhi, this individual may become infectious within just the first few weeks. It means whatever feces they pass may be infectious with the salmonella typhi. And this person may be infectious for life, may be a carrier for life. Okay. So uh, basically, uh, the other thing is that the incubation period of, uh, of uh, typhoid fever varies with the size and uh, with the size and the extent at which it is infecting uh, an individual. So mainly an, in an average individual it ranges for about 10 to 20 days. So the, the, the incubation period is about 10 to 20 days in an average individual but it may vary depending on uh, the type of individual who is being affected and the immunity that they have. So basically that is about the short pathophysiology of typhoid fever. That's why even the life cycle, it, is, it cannot be asked because of uh, the condition itself. It has a short pathophysiology and which is not so, so specific. So the, the, the bacteria just enters through oral, uh, oral root, you ingest, which is oral fecal root, you ingest something contaminated with feces and those feces should have the salmonella typhi afterwards it goes into the bowels, from the bowels they multiply, penetrate through the body, migrate to the lymph nodes, spleen, gall, bladder, and some still remain in the intestines to continue feeding off the intestine and also reproducing. After that, uh, you see now symptoms such as fever arising because the, 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 the bacteria has spread to the entire body. Body malaise will come in uh, because there is increased breakdown of red blood cells because of presence of the, the salmonella typhi and other other symptoms are going to come in. So after that from there then we can furthermore look at the uh, clinical manifestations of uh, salmonella uh, f typhoid fever rather. So when it comes to clinical manifestations these are grouped in terms of uh, what an individual may experience in the first week second week and also the third week. So in the first week an individual may have uh, clinical manifestations uh, such as, uh, such as um, uh, body malaise. So the patient may experience generalized body weakness in the first week of uh, um, infection when these clinical manifest, uh, manifestations happen. So the patient may experience generalized body Malaise. Apart from that, the patient may also experience headache, uh, general generalized body pain, and also fever. So uh, the patient may experience these symptoms uh, in the first week. Headache is basically because red blood cells are being broken down at a higher rate in, in an effort to try and clear out the infection you see now headaches because the oxygen has been reduced in its supply to the to the brain then in general body pain is because there's increased hemolysis of red blood cells which can increase its viscosity and the rate at which it can even easily clamp or attach to the walls of the blood vessels then in fever this is the common symptom that we have been talking about because there is the presence of salmonella typhi in the blood and then it raises eh, the fever because once there is that uh, this uh, uh, this pre presence of this bacteria th this salmonella type in the blood it is going to initiate eh, a response an antigen immune uh, antigen antibody response which basically sh um, results into fever so basically that is what is going to happen in the first week 
Okay, then we can move on to the second week. So in the second week, the patient becomes worse at this point. The patient becomes worse and the general symptoms and signs may be severe. So the symptoms that we have looked at in the first week, they may now become severe. Here the patient may experience severe abdominal pains and diarrhea may also begin. So in the second week, the patient now experiences severe abdominal pains and also diarrhea may occur. The, patient, uh, the patient's consciousness may be also altered in this week. So you might realize that maybe the patient even goes into unconscious state. The abdomen is usually distended uh, due to accumulation of fluids and uh, intestinal con uh, due to accumulation of fluids mainly and may be tender, meaning it may be tender, especially in the right iliac fossa. So we said this condition is affecting the bowels. So when you look in the right iliac fossa, that's where you find now the folds of the bowels. So you may, the patient may experience tenderness, meaning it's pain on touch. As you are palpating, this patient is going to Feel pain, so tenderness is pain on touch, and this man is going to be experienced on the right iliac fossa. Okay. At this point, the spleen may enlarge, so they may be also splenomegaly. Apart from that, uh, fever and fever may still be present, but severe, and the patient may have uh, a slow pulse or a reduced pulse. Some patients may also experience signs of bronchitis. So some patients may also experience signs of bronchitis due to the affected, uh, due to respiratory tract involvement. Then the patient may even experience bronchitis like they have uh, a respiratory tract infection. Maybe the bronchioles are inflamed. That's what you may suspect. Meanwhile, it's not the bronchioles which are uh, which are affected. It is just uh, the condition spreading to those regions and then causing uh, inflammation. Okay, apart from that, the patient may also develop rash on the abdomen. So the rash is the uh, rosy spot. So rosy spot, it, had, uh, it, it, it has uh, a fine margin. This rash, they have fine margins and then with a red spot on, on, on the middle which is called a rosy spot, um, a rosy spot uh, rash. So the pa these symptoms may be present and this mainly occurs on the abdomen. Okay. So you realize that on the second week, those symptoms are going to be present in this particular patient who is symptomatic to typhoid fever. Mainly this condition is common in children. They, it is, it, they are commonly affected with it typhoid fever okay so in the third week the third week the general symptoms and abdominal symptoms they now become worse remember in the first week we only talked of the general symptoms and not the abdominal symptoms in the second week we have talked of both the general symptoms and also the abdominal symptoms and the, in the third week we are saying now both the general symptoms and the abdominal symptoms they now become worse and the patient at this at this time they may go into into unconsciousness and also they may die so in the third week if it is not treated the patient may go into unconsciousness and on and may die so during the third week two complications may occur and the first complication is that the bowel may be perforate may perforate leading to peritonitis so the bowels may perforate remember this condition is affecting the bowels so when the salmonella type remains in the bowels they'll be feeding off the lining of the bowels and which can lead to perforation when perforation occurs bowel contacts are going to seep through and go into the peritoneal cavity causing an inflammation which we call peritonitis so this is a sudden abdominal pain and rapid worsening of the patient's condition and symptoms and signs of general peritonitis they even develop. And if you are talking about peritonitis in surgery, you know that this is an emergency 
uh, surgery or surgical condition so you have to take note that uh, peritonitis may occur in the third week apart from peritonitis as as a complication hemorrhage may occur from the intestine or into the intestines so uh, into, into the intestinal lumen so hemorrhage may occur from the intestine or into the intestinal lumen so because the, 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 uh, the, the, the epithelial tissue lining the, the, the bowels has been injured hemorrhage severe hemorrhage may occur because the blood vessels are also going to be uh, affected you have the vesicle plexus which, uh, which are supplying the, the walls of the blood vessel meaning they may be exposed and then uh, severe hemorrhage may occur so the patient then may begin to pass blood from the rectum you will see now the patient even passing just blood not even feces a lot of feces but it may be more concentrated with blood or simply the patient may just become pale and go into hemorrhagic shock and then they may die so typhoid fever is uh, a severe condition because if the patient does not die he or she begins uh, to recover with, uh, after the fourth week so if the patient survives the third week you expect them to recover in the fourth week but the third week is severe if it says that the patient dies or they develop the complications that we have uh, talked about okay so now we can move on to management so in terms of management we are going to look at it from the point of uh, medical and also uh, nursing management so when it comes to typhoid fever this is an infectious condition meaning you are supposed to isolate this patient nurse them alone when you do infection prevention when it comes to nursing management however we'll start with medical management so in medical management you are going to do uh, start with investigations so when it comes to investigations you are going to do laboratory you are going to start with the history taking rather so during history taking the patient may present uh, with the, uh, may present with history of um, maybe raised body temperature so maybe the patient will have uh, will present with history of raised they will verbalize they have had a raised body temperature for some time so they will have history of uh, raised body temperature uh, or basically uh, they, they will come from an endemic area so by endemic area so history of uh, uh, coming from an endemic area it could be an individual stays in an area where they have um, poor water supply it could be a place where they don't have uh, direct running water like some uh, places in Lusaka and then you would expect that they might drink contaminated water which may result into them developing the problem or the condition then during physical examination the patient may experience abdominal pain or the patient may experience abdominal pain or the other thing is um, or abdominal pain or tenderness on the right iliac fossa then when we go to laboratory investigations laboratory investigations you can do um, uh, uh, you can do a um, you can do a urine or stool culture to isolate the causative organism apart from that you can do blood cultures to isolate the organism from the blood or you can do a um, bone marrow aspiration uh, for also culture and the sensitivity reaction apart from that blood is going to show uh, leukocytosis so blood may show leukocytosis also increase the white blood cells so it may indicate to say there is an infection in the body apart from those laboratory tests the other tests that you can do are what they call a, so a serological test so the serological test which is common in typhoid fever is the WIDO test so the WIDO test is W-I-D-A-L so this is called the WIDO test this measures the uh, antibodies against typhoid the salmonella typhi so you find to say uh, the antibodies against the, the flagella which is also the typhoid it will be high meaning 
it will detect or it will indicate to say this patient has uh, typhoid fever. Then after you give those five investigation, investigations, you can now move on to uh, the treatment. So when it comes to medical treatment, you are going to give at least three drugs mentioning the dose, the route, uh, the duration, mode of action, uh, two side effects, at least the nursing implication, three drugs to get full marks. So in a, you can give ciprofloxacin. Ciprofloxacin or cipro is a drug of choice in typhoid fever. Ciprofloxacin you can give it orally. An adult you can give 500 milligrams BD for 14 days. In a child you can give 10 milligrams per kg body weight BD for also 14 days. Apart from ciprofloxacin, you can give uh, kefotriaxone. So kefotriaxone IV, you can give um, you can give one to two uh, milligrams, one to two grams rather. You can give one to two grams, which is the one thousand to two thousand milligrams once daily for seven days. So this is IV. Apart from kefotriaxone, you can also give chloramphenicol. Chloramphenicol, you can give it orally or you can give it through IV. You can give chloramphenicol, the dose is 500 milligrams, QID daily for, se for five days. Uh, then apart from those drugs that I've given above, the other drugs that you can give are basically amoxicillin. So amoxicillin can be given in typhoid fever. So you give amoxicillin about 400 milligrams, QID oral for five days. So those are the drugs that you can give. Also ampicillin works, ampicillin 500 milligrams, QID for five days. So you can give those antibiotics in typhoid fever. When it comes to nursing management, when it comes to nursing management, you are going to, um, to handle typhoid fever as an infectious eh, disease, meaning you need to after you, 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 when you write your heading nursing management, you need to start with the isolation. You need to isolate that patient. And we have been talking about points to put on isolation almost every day. So it's the same points because it's an infectious condition. After that, talk about isolation, patient isolation. You talk about all those points that you need to talk about under the heading of isolation. Uh, then if you, there are other points that you need to bring in infection prevention, you can bring in those points. Then after that, talk about now, uh, uh, talk about uh, psychological care. Talk about psychological care. So when it comes to psychological care, you need to, it needs to come as an immediate uh, care heading because you need to explain the condition to the patient and the relative and the reason why you are isolating their patient and also not allowing them visitations and uh, all those things. Then from there you can move on to observation. After you talk about observation, move on to nutrition, talk about headings on uh, points on nutrition. Hygiene is very cardinal in uh, in typhoid fever because you need to make sure the patient is uh, hygienically clean to prevent spread of the infection. Even though you have isolated them, you are the same nurse who will still go and handle patients from other words. So you need to make sure the rooms are very clean, where they are sleeping from, they are very clean, their feces are properly disposed, everything. So hygiene is very important. Apart from it promoting uh, recovery, it is very important in prevention of spread of uh, infection. Then you can also talk about uh, medication, talk about uh, you continuing monitoring the prescribed medication. So this is nursing management. When you talk of medication, you don't talk about drugs in details. You just talk about them on the surface. Then you can also talk about uh, elimination. You need to ensure that uh, elimination is, uh, is, is, is okay because this patient is going to have diarrhea, meaning they'll be losing a lot of water through feces. So you need to ensure that the input and output are matching. This can also prevent 
dehydration. So basically that's how you can manage a patient who has typhoid fever. So typhoid fever is common also in children but it may also occur in adults. So that's how you can manage this condition both in adults and children. It is an infectious, infectious condition. So thank you so much for taking time to go through this tutorial video make sure you go through the notes and uh, then study and uh, everything is going to be okay make sure you know the drugs and everything do not panic be do not be too fast do not be too slow do not panic but just study at your own pace a pace that will, will get you to where you want to be before gnc so have uh, enjoy your your weekend We'll meet for another class probably um, on Monday. Yeah.